What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Unvarnished, where we talk to cool people from around the print industry. And in this episode, I'm speaking with Devin and Brian Craig from Branded by Woods. I happened upon their website one day, and I was kind of blown away, because it does not look like a printer's website, because it's not really a printer's website. It is, it's something different. And we'll get into that in this interview. I hope you like it. So I, I got to ask, um, what's up with the monkey? <laughs> well, um, part of the short answer is why not? You know, why not have a monkey? But it, it was, we went, it was about a two year process of going through everything and uh, through our revamp brand. We were Woods Printing Company and then became branded by Woods. Um, COVID really was the final, you know, kind of push that we needed to do that. But then it, as we're developing the brand, uh, we're just kind of spitballing ideas. And it was like, what about a monkey? And, you know, and she looked at me about like she is now, like you're nuts. But uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but one of our designers here, so she that is drawn from here. And then she, if you look on the website, it actually has her grandfather who founded our company, has his signature in the sleeve of the of the wrinkles. Um, you know, so one of the wrestlers that's on there too, that was another brainchild that she was not fond of immediately. Uh, but the, the, uh, tattoo, uh, has MC Woods in the tattoo on, in the heart of the wrestler, which is her, Morris C. Woods was his name. So the, it's a little bit of an ode and, a, and paying homage to, to her grandfather. Uh, he always wore the paper boy hat. Um, he was a big jokester, just kind of, you know, a guy that would have fun. He was HR's worst nightmare. Uh, you know, this is back in, in the seventies. Um, but he, you know, it was, he was just kind of a jokester. So it just kind of felt right as we were trying to rebrand and do some fun stuff. I can't, I, I mean, I'm blown away that you would choose to do that with the pandemic. I mean, it, it, that's amazing that you leaned in and actually got more aggressive and, added more personality, especially at a time when you would think you'd, well, I would think you'd want to be conservative and, and make everybody happy and not, you know, scare anybody away because you have a monkey on there. And I think that was before the launch, we were all like, okay, we're just, we're putting this out there. We're going to see what happens. It was very scary. Um, but the feedback that we got from our community here locally was tremendous. Um, everybody loved the colors and the creativity so it was the support we received was phenomenal yeah and that's sorry it was one of those two um like i said we had been working this direction for about two years um really trying to get the right people in place and work i mean we had all kinds of different logos and different things that we had come up with and then uh, covid kind of said you know hey we you got to do something different you've got to be different um you know, we're coming out of this looking different anyway. So let's do it. Let's try it. Now's the time. Let's push the chips into the middle and let's see what we can do. And I think it was a time too during COVID. We're so focused on everybody else's business and what we can do for them that that really gave us the time to focus on ourselves and what can we do differently? How can we market ourselves differently to connect with um, new customers? That's pretty courageous, I got to say. Either courageous or stupid, one of the two. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just curious about your business. I mean, are you, is most of your business local? I mean, is it mostly in your um, region, vicinity? Yeah, so we have, um, our area is heavy into furniture manufacturing. Uh, so we have grown up with the manufacturers around here. We're, this is our 50th year. Um, so we've grown up with them. Uh, we service really like any printer that's out there, you know, we're very regional focused. Um, so within, within the Southern Indiana market is, is our main area. Um, that said, we have, we, we branch out, we ship nationwide, but it's for the manufacturers that are, that are local yeah. here. So, but as far as our company goes and kind of how we look and how we're positioning ourselves, so I've been back in the company for 11 years. She's been here six. Uh, Devin handles all of our promotional side. Uh, so 
about seven years ago, I guess it was, um, we decided our customers were asking, you know, hey, do you guys do, do you do coffee mugs or pens or whatever? And and uh, we finally, we'd always said no, but we finally just kind of did it. And our focus was to try to do the higher end stuff, not the, what they call the trinkets and trash. And so our, our focus has been, hey, these are gifts. And so then she's come in and really kind of developed that arm of it. Um, and then, you know, we've, we really started doing a lot more logo design and using our design department. So that was printing needed to come out of our name is kind of why we decided to do it. We were, people were confused or a lot of times people were like, we didn't know that you did this. We didn't expect, you know, this to come from Woods. Right. And there was confusion between the print side and the promotional side. Yeah. Um, when I came in, the promotional side was functioning under a DBA. So we had offset promotions underneath the Woods printing umbrella. So this kind of brought it all uh, together as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So now as far as we are, we're working with some SEO companies to kind of branch out within a three hour region. What's interesting about where we're located in Indiana, uh, we're two and a half to Indy, three hours to Cincinnati, an hour to Louisville, Kentucky, uh, two and a half to Lexington, Kentucky, um, three hours to Nashville, Tennessee, three hours to St. Louis. So we are, we're trying to kind of branch into those and let the branding portion of our business drive the print piece. Have you seen um, a change in how people perceive you now that you've changed the name? And we have, and it's been well. I mean, it's it's been it's been positive. Um, we've actually been shocked at how positive it has been. Um, my approach, and I'm out telling more of the print or at least working with our sales force to, to do that. Um, it is so much easier to sell print from a branding angle than it is to sell it as print. Print has become a commodity, whether we like it or not. It's how cheaply can we get it? And uh, nobody wants to be in that, you know, that kind of that you don't create loyal customers that way. It's just who can get it for the cheapest price. So when we go in and we start talking to them about their logo, about color management, about the recreation of that and all the different types of print that create those, whether it's from paper to a label to a pen or a coffee mug or whatever, uh, while we don't do all of that in house, we at least understand the process and we manage that color piece for them and really start to try to focus in on small to medium sized businesses that don't have that marketing department, don't have the budget for it, that can lean on us as the experts. I guess I assume that's why you did what you did. Just looking from the outside, I'm like, wow, that really, you know, it changes the whole discussion. I mean, it changes how, you know, there's not one mention of print really. I mean, I guess if I dug deep enough. there, Yeah. And we're going to change a few things. I've had some more services on there, but we, Specifically left the website a little vague, uh, a little, uh, a lot quirky, I guess you could say, uh, you know, different to make people go, hmm, maybe I need to reach out to them, what, find, at least find out what they do. Um, you know, and our goal is to, if we can get a contact, we want to talk to you face to face. You know, we, and, and everything, you know, with this, with an Amazon world and Vista print world and everything else that people are wanting. So but I also think they like that personal interaction. You know, I just had a meeting last week with somebody um, that they were from St. Louis. Uh, he had said, you know, I'd gone online and did a, a logo design, but I just want to talk to somebody. I want to meet, you know, he's like, it was okay. It's like, no, we need to tell your story. We've got to dig in and find out where you've been and where you're going. And we've got to put that in a logo so that that can, people can understand who you are when they look at now, going back to the um, rebranding and the timing with COVID, um, do you think it helped you recover faster? Or did you not have any recovery time? I mean, what was it like during, I mean. We did have a, Yeah, we had a, we had a rough patch, honestly. It was, we had to lay off 25% of our workforce from, I guess, trying to find a silver lining of that. We had never done anything like that in, in 50 years yeah. we'd been around. Never had anything um, else. But it helped us really lean out and help us helped us to figure out and realize we could get more done with less people. 
knock on wood, our last four months have been very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the best four months we've seen over the last four or five years. So that's uh, as far as back to back to back ways there. I, so yes, I do think it has helped us because we, I mean, we at least say weekly, we are surprised with how many calls we are getting for this or, Hey, didn't, you know, I got this and love the logo or love whatever you were doing. And we wanted to contact you and find out what you could do for us. What has been nice. And it was actually two weeks in a row. I went into two different manufacturers. One called us in to do a, the first one wanted a website quote. So we were talking to them and I just stopped everything. I said, okay, let's talk about your logo. Is this something that, you know, that you're happy with, or you wanted to change it? What's going on? Come to find out they've been thinking about doing a name change and all this. So we then stopped everything about the website, started talking about their name, their logo, everything. So we've worked with them and helped guide them through a name change, a logo rebrand, which then turned into all the print needed to be redone, all the apparel needed to be redone. And we are just now starting, at, I think we're at week 24 working with them. We are just now starting the website. Um, so, and then the following week I went into a place that wanted us there for a logo design and I asked about, a, about their website and they're like, well, we've got a guy that's kind of done this before, but yeah, we do, we like to keep it local. So let's, let's do this. So we got a, a website out of a logo meeting. So it has really kind of helped, like I said, guide that conversation. And I guess it's kind of like, you know, going into a, um, automotive place and everybody understands their brakes. They understand what they do and that you need them to stop. And if they're bad, you need to replace them. And it's easier to talk to somebody about their logo and their colors and, and you know, all the heart and soul that they've put into their company and talk about that than it is to say, Hey, you know, your brochures, let's chat about that. Or, you know, their, your, your sell sheets or whatever. So uh, that was just come along for the ride. Okay. I'm a designer. You're making this sound way too easy, man. <laughs> well, when we, when we turn off the cameras, uh, there are some choice words we may use or whatever, but, uh, but no, it's, it honestly has been, from a sales standpoint, it is a much easier sales path to do it that way than it is to do talking about print. Because... Nobody wants to talk about print. It, I mean, whether we like it or not, CEOs today that don't have any print or marketing background, they see it, they put it in the same container as nuts and bolts. How do we get them the cheapest? You know, let's get them in. It is a cost that we need to cut, but they always need them and they always want them to be great. And, you know, I think we as printers are our own worst enemy because the first thing that we do when a customer calls and says, Hey, can you cut the cost? You know, I really want to use you, but you're about 5% higher. Can you cut it? First thing every printer does is cut it. And we decrease the value that we bring to the table. So if we can not talk about that, we find that it sometimes keeps the conversation away from price and they see the value that we bring. You're having a totally different conversation. I mean, you're again, you're an agency that happens to have printers. I mean, that's that's very. I mean, I know there's other people that are doing that and and have purchased agencies or you know, um, how did how did you, how did you become comfortable talking the agency talk? Well, I've got so my undergrad is in marketing, uh, so I have that uh, on my grad degree is in healthcare actually i didn't do any marketing in healthcare i did administration in healthcare before i came in came back with her um it's just i when i came in to the company it was 2011 so it was post the 2008 downturn every printer and their brother was trying to be a a an msp you know we're changing from a psp to an msp and quite frankly, I thought it was a crock because I'm like, just because you print marketing material, you're not a marketer. I mean, and it would, I, and I think you saw a lot of printers fail that way. So it was something that over that period of time, uh, as our people retired or left or whatever that may be, 
I made a concerted effort, and then when she came in too, we both did, to hire back people that were very comfortable in design, very comfortable in marketing. Uh, so, you know, we, our director of art and design, she's uh, came from, actually from a local manufacturer, but came from a, a major manufacturing brand in their marketing department. Um, we just hired another guy, 20 years of experience. He actually, he was a customer and then left and spent a couple of years at home with his children. And then I just reached out and said, Hey, you, uh, you're not looking or anything. He's like, actually, I'm just starting. So he's got 20 years of experience in both agency and a uh, manufacturer. And he said, I'm coming on. This sounds great. So, um, it, it it's kind of transpired over the course of several years of yeah. being able to speak the language, talk to the right people, um, and trying to be that creative printer, being able to do, and that was kind of a, a niche for us, was doing something very, very custom. Um, we would a lot of times get the jobs that were the hard jobs that no other printer wanted to do, and we would do those. Um, so much so that one agency told us, she's like, I'll be back next time I have a hard job. And I was like, I would like the easy ones too, if you could do that, that would be fantastic. Um, so yeah, I think it's just kind of over it's evolved time. over time, yeah. I and I will, so I will also give your brother some credit. So believe it or not, her brother has a, he has a large agency out in Boulder, Colorado, mm -hmm. and he wanted nothing to do with print. He's like, I, I never want to do, do it. I just want to send you stuff. But, you know, we've kind of been able to pick his brain a little bit when, you know, if there are times that come up that I'll call him and be like, Derek, what do you do when you've got a customer that just really wants to have their hand in the design and it's awful? Um, you know, and he's like, oh, yeah, that happens. You know, here's what I do. And he kind of gives us some advice there. But, uh, yeah, it's just kind of happened through the years and just kind of learn it. And then it was a leap of faith yeah. when, we, when we launched. So. So are there some clients that don't even put ink on paper? Yeah, I guess we would. We'd have some smaller ones that haven't done uh, actual paper stuff. That's They've done promotional promotionals, items. but nice. we can usually tie them into some other elements. That's the other thing. When you get a brand new logo, you're all excited about it and you want to put you it on stuff. It. So, yeah. you know, everybody wants a t-shirt with their logo on it, you know, or, and everybody wants a business card with that. So. I was going to say too, I think the, the whole process of going through branding with a company allows us to really dig into their story, which then in turn allows us to really create customized products that are really going to work for them and help to market their businesses. So I think that's, and my grandfather built this company on partnerships and that is what, I mean, that is truly um, what we do yeah. is build partnerships with our customers. Um, so I think that's kind of helps us to, to evolve as well to where we yeah. are. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Unvarnished. If you want a little bit more information about Branded by Woods and their super cool sample room, be sure to stop by dscoop.com, click on the learn button, and search for sample room. Until next time, keep it unvarnished.